What is going on guys, my name is Ron back again from Mom Reviews here with another episode of reaction to Bartender Glass of God, episode 4, The Face of a Martini. Now, I I've said this probably every single time, this is the show that has been the biggest surprise. And I know not a lot of people are probably going to be talking about this because not everyone drinks, not everyone's really interested about bartending in general or about cocktails, mixing hard spirits and all that stuff. But I I've been really enjoying this. Um... I, I've said this also before, I don't drink a lot anymore, simply due to the fact that it's a lot of empty calories. Like a shot, no, sorry, not a shot, an ounce of vodka, which is what you need to use for a Moscow meal, which is one of my favorite drinks, especially now that it's starting to get super warm out, is like 67 calories, which isn't too much. I mean, if you have one, but then you have to think about the ginger beer that you add, that's about 130 calories. And then the lime, which is probably like, two calories. So, I mean, it's still about over 200 calories. I can have a really good protein bar that would last me for quite a while for a little bit less than 200 calories. I'm weighing out my options, plus I get my protein, you know. So, I don't know, it's just a little bit sad that I have to start thinking this way, but if I'm trying to hit my goal by the end of the year, or actually by the halfway part of this year, and then hit my other goal, I need to basically hold off on it. Now, drinking in moderation is good. Drink it a lot? No. So if I if I ever decide to have a drink, I'm basically need, need to make sure I, I'm either skipping a meal or I'm having a very, very low calorie food day uh, just to make up for it. But yeah, I um, wanted to also talk about what I've been going through. Um, if you're not interested in that, perfectly fine. I know some people are like, I just want to watch the video. Perfectly fine. Um, just skip on ahead. But I've been going through a lot of a weird situation with my life where I think I probably, I, I don't know if I talked about this in detail. My memory of span is the, is the, I have the memory of a goldfish. So I might have said this, but I'm in this part of my life where I'm 29. One more year, I'm in my, I'm in my 30s. And my friend group is tiny. And the friends that I currently have, the ones that I can actually say friends, I have one. That, I, that lives here, that I could easily hit up and be like, hey, you want to hang out? And you'll probably be like, yeah, sure. It's always about food, and then we catch up, but we only do it every few months. And it's usually catch up, talk about jobs, uh, uh, love lives, uh, just stuff like that. But I could, if I wanted to, I could hit them up, but I'm 95% I'm of the time I'm the one hitting them up. But at least he'll actually respond and be like, yeah, sure, we'll figure out a time. The rest, no. One of the, a couple of them, understandable. They have their own lives. They have their own jobs. They have their own significant others. So I let them be. Um, so that makes sense. But they'll usually respond. But the rest, I'll hit them up, ask them about something. I won't get a response until I, like, hey, everything cool? It's like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. So, I don't know. I just need to try to find friends who will treat that me how I would treat them. I feel like if you're going to be a good friend, you're there for them. If they hit you up, you respond, and if you're busy, you still respond saying, "Hey, I'm busy. I'll ca I'll I'll catch up with you in a minute." But it it's rare if it, it seems like maybe it's just where I live in Vegas where it's like that because I'm starting to realize there's just a lot of people here. Not what I want in friends. A lot of a lot of people are fake, and I can usually tell. And those people I don't even attempt to really get into outside of a surface level. Um, so I leave that at the door. But I mean, like with my own personal friends, it just seems like I'm trying to do more than what they're comfortable with. And I actually respect. Um, I have actually was a newer friend of mine that I try to get like, a more acquainted with, um, but she just tends to not be super social. Makes perfect sense. So, I kind of have to be like, oh, okay, I didn't realize I'm, I'm, I'm more of the social type than she is, so she wants to, she would rather play games, and she would rather go hang out with her, with her, um, partner, and then do her own thing. Perfectly understandable. But I'm trying to find people that, one, work with how I I'm starting to be, and then also would do the same as I would do to them, if you know what I mean. 
So it's been a little bit hard. Um, I'm trying. Uh, it's also hard to find people in my current age group at my work because most of the people are either significantly younger and no, uh, or mid thirties and they have their own family. And so that's already off the table again. So it's, a, it's trying to find a weird balance, but I, I'm, I'm attempting, I'm going to be reaching out to people soon, but yeah, but that's what I've been going through and just other things have been difficult, but I'm trying to be positive. That's the, what it comes down to is positivity, looking at things in a brighter light because I can have my, mo I'll have my moments where I'm just despairing about life in general. And it's not just to do with friends and relationships. There's way more other stuff going on, but it, sometimes it gets very heavy and takes a toll on me mentally. So last week, the last two weeks were actually really rough. You can really see it in my reactions. Um, I'm, I'm doing a lot better this week. Hopefully it continues. I strive to continuously be a better person mentally, physically, emotionally. But some days I, 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 I tend to step back. But as long as I continue to keep moving forward and a setback's okay, but as long as I continue to move forward, if you know what I mean? I'm getting too cheesy here. I'm ready to go watch people talk about drinks and stuff. So without further ado, uh, let me at least start this up. So without further ado, let's jump into episode four of Bartender Glass of God started in three, two, one. Let's jam. You can all pretend that this is vodka. It's it's water, but it's flavored water, but yeah. In Paris. Water is actually huge for cooking because of how water is done in every single country. Like, don't drink the tap water in America. It's not the best. But you can drink tap water in other countries. Just not, not America. Hey, that's the intro. And speaking of, yes. I always skip the intro after I've seen it. That was a long ass pour. <laughs> I had a feeling that was a oh, it was a mug. What? Which? One, what are you using? What are you using? What are you using? No, break this down. I see it all the time. I would actually love to come across someone like this. That's a weird looking Moscow Mule mug. It's more tall than rounded. Still looks dope. Tell me how you made it. Yes, lime, lemon, lime wedge. It's three ingredients, by the way. Unless you want to go more like really sophisticated, you can make it a four ingredients if you use real ginger and then you would use soda water. Or soda. Damn it, so we're not gonna see him make a Moscow meal. Thank you. Bro, I'm hungry. Dude, standing bars are actually kind of dope. I've only been on one, but they're, they're actually really cool. Chive. It could work. I mean, salty and sweet. Especially if you added some, you know, some soy sauce or whatever dipping, like, dipping sauce that you use.
Why didn't you take us? I have a totally have a feeling she's gonna start budding a romance in some way, and I'm glad they're not showing it right off the bat. Let's see how, hopefully it's not super stingy, not stingy, um, uptight. Francophile. Dude, Yakiniku or Yakitori. Sorry, not Yakiniku. Yakitori. There's a few really good places here in Vegas. Water would be very hard to bring back. I mean, I'm a... Well, it said martini, so I'm assuming it's not that, because that is not the right color. I mean, you would have, I mean, any chef in general would have a nice palate. In fact, I would actually have a bigger, eh, French, French do have, do like their liquor. But I would actually say if they were Italian too, but I guess that would be more for wine. I don't know what that is. Does anyone know why you tilt, you tilt the glass like that? Yep. It's not, that does not look like a, it does have a wine glass though. No. Whiskey. Mirin. It is a cooking. It is a cooking wine. It's, je it's yeah. It's not really wine, sorry, but it's a cooking alcohol. I don't know why I said wine, sorry, because they were talking about wine. I've had mirin, that's why I have never would have thought that. I've, I've used mirin in cooking, um, but it, yes, traditionally it's a, it's a cooking. But... It,
Yeah, because I would not eat. I don't know. Mm. I feel like it's more of a technique rather than the ingredients. I wouldn't have. I don't. I think if anyone believes that, that that's a really stupid um, mentality. That's like saying I can't make a Japanese cocktail because I'm not Japanese, or it's not the same because I'm not Japanese. That's that's a stupid and ignorant way of thinking. I can make I've made Italian a drink that's in Italian. I'm not Italian. Yeah, I'm not Italian. I'm more Polish. White side. European side. But yes, you don't ingredients, yes, are important, however. In, in cooking, I don't think you can do a, let's say, a cocktail that specifically calls for Japanese something, and it's not Japanese. You could re use a different whiskey, but I don't know. I guess at the same time, you know, it doesn't need to be a Moscow meal. It can't be a Moscow meal if the um, vodka you're using isn't Russian. Although, funny thing is, Moscow Mule was made in America. True. Hello. Oh, she was angry last time. So I'm assuming this is where the martini part comes in. It, it was more of a push, I feel like. I'm so mad that what you said. Mm. Uh. Face. I I I can't really explain a face. A martini. Beef eater is probably the most commonly gin used gin for um, martinis, yes. I would agree that martinis would be considered the king of cocktails, but I feel like the then what would you call the grandfather of cocktails? Old fashioned. It's the OG. It should. If it has no, if it has no um, fragrance, I think there's something wrong. I would assume by the mixing. Yeah. It 
is probably the one they choose. Oh, just a bartender. Ooh. Hell's Arms. Yeah, you come for both. Hey, girl, you come here often? I know. <laughs> Short haired tomboy fit. Yep, I've seen vodka martinis. Ooh, add an air. You use... From that... Wow, I'm going to sound like such a nerd. From that sound, there was a large chunk of ice. Um, and that adds a lot of air into the uh, drink. Yeah, but you're using the cap. He's going to say what it is. Yeah, you you use the cap or the of the very flat top of the peel or whatever and then you carve it open. You could also do it a certain that's actually probably an easier way of doing it. Actually, now that I think about it, so that's actually kind of cool. But I, I, even I've even I've seen that. It does you do it does take some time to really refine. You also if you have a really good um teacher, I'm sure. You can't really really freeze it. No. Very true. That is 100% very true. If you use the same exact way, the ingredients of how I make my, um, my Moscow meal, 
unless you do the certain things, you're not going to hit the same flavor. It's not that hard, but if you were to replicate, yeah, if you were to replicate both my ingredients and exactly what I do, sure, you'll get the same flavor. But if you don't know exactly what I do and just prep it with using the same ingredients, yeah, you're not going to know. It's going to be different. Just slightly. If you were to put it side by side, you would tell there's a slight difference. And a lot of it, I'll give you a, I'll, I'll basically tell you what it is. A lot of it actually deals with the ice. How much water you're adding to the cocktail when you're mixing it. Like, if I were to become a bartender and actually try, which I'm not probably ever going to do, um, I would want... Sorry, it's back story. I'm kind of interested. It looks different, too. Very different. Like, so basic, I, I feel like he can, he did it. He was able to do it. Hold on, I just need to rewind that really, oh, because there is a, no, there's no credit scene. Oh, interesting. Also, he's drinking another person's drink. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, one thing that I'm a little bit curious on. So, I totally lost my train about what I was trying to say beforehand. Um, oh, yeah. So, if I were to become, like, a bartender, I would want to do something where... You can feel the passion I put into it, even if it's not a drink that you, that is your per preference. But you can tell it's like, oh, I, he tried to make something that I would enjoy. I might not have enjoyed it, but I can tell he tried. Something like that. I mean, that's definitely a very low ball, I feel like, and a low bar for other people to hit, but that's what I personally would go for. But yeah, another good episode. The only thing is, I would have loved to have seen how he made his meal. I would have loved to have seen that. What kind of, what, what vodka he used, what kind of ginger beer did he use, or if he used an actual ginger syrup and then soda water. If he, because that's another way of doing it. Um, and that's more of the higher standard. Um, I could do that, but I'd rather just use ginger beer. I've actually never tested it. I've just tested with different versions of ginger beer for my Moscow mules. Um, and then test of which vodka, of course, I can always use. Now, you could always use the standard beaver tree. Um, like, I'll give you a, I'll give you a little bit one. Here's a really good cocktail that you can make, and it's sort of similar. So, if there are two kinds of mules that I make, a spicy and a smooth. Um, when I say spicy and smooth, it purely refers to the ginger beer that you're going to be using. Beaver tree... At least in America, it could be popular everywhere, other places, I'm not sure. But Fever Tree is one of the most well-known brands of ginger beer itself. And that tends to be higher in the content of the ginger. So if you like that, it's more spicy. It's a spicy variant. But the one I prefer to use is a brand called Q. Q is known for their mixers. They do tonic water, soda water, ginger beer, a couple other things. Um, and I like theirs because it's smoother. You get that ginger taste, but it complements other flavors as well. So I use Q ginger beer. And then for my vodka, 
I've tested with Absolute. I've tested with, um, oh my gosh, what's the name of it? Tito's. I've tested with Pop Hov. Not, no, Pop Hov's not that good. Not, not to me, at least. But the one that I absolutely liked was Absolute Elix. It just works. Funny thing is, if you taste it by itself, uh -uh. but as a mixed, when it's mixed in that drink particularly, phenomenal. Um, and then, of course, fresh limes. Always use fresh. You can use, like, um, one that's already been squeezed, sure, but there's just something about a freshly squeezed lime or lemon if you're going to go that route for whatever drinks you're using. It, it doesn't compare. It will never compare. It, it, it's night and day. It's a freshness that you taste. But that's how I make my Moscow meal. Absolute Elix, Q, ginger beer, and lime. But it's how I mix it with the ice. Some people, they'll mix things when it's all put together. I tend to raise the, the to lower the temperature of the vodka right beforehand. I get my Moscow Mule cup, I add in a bunch of ice, and then I mix in just that. It adds a little bit of dilution, but it chills the vodka, and actually, it cools the mug really fast. But... I've done it that way. So I've seen a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll add the vodka, then the lime juice, and then the ginger beer, and then they'll mix it up. I mix things up every single step. Don't know why, it tastes different. It's the slightest difference, but that's just how I do it. And of course, it also depends on how much ice you put in the actual drink, because you will, since it is small cubes, you will have dilution. And it's not going to be a giant rock where you would add just coldness and very minimal dilution. Just fun things. It's fun. It's actually a really fun um, hobby that I did. I just wish I could afford it, and also I um, wish I could, you know, kind of lose this, so I can't really do it. But yeah. anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. That's my little my little extra thing that I decided to add. But yeah, I will see you guys uh, next in the next few days. Maybe I might post another video beforehand, or I might go live. We will see. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode's reaction. Yeah, I always have fun with the show, and I want to see more. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.